Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video I'm going to tell you how you can fine tune Fire 3.5 mini model with your own data. So right now the model is doing perfect uh, and uh, you can say it is giving you the expected output but there are some use cases or business cases where you are expecting output to be in a certain format only. So for that I'm going to show you the data set which I have taken and then we'll see how Phi 3.5 is trained to answer the questions based on our trained data set. So before we get started, I would quickly want to show you something uh, which is called Unsloth. So you can go to Unsloth AI and the reason why I'm showing you this is because like I don't have the GPU with me right now, but I really want to fine tune and experiment around few of these models. So I came across this Unsloth AI and here it provides you the platform to like you can see here it is very easy to fine tune and train LLMs and if you're using this Unsloth AI you can definitely try out few models because they have a very good speed they have memory efficient algorithms everything in uh, in place so you can go ahead and try this out because I'm going to use this one today and the reason why I'm using is because when I was going or surfing the hugging face I just came across this and here you can see there are like five notebooks which are already available and we can use these five notebooks in collab to fine tune our models so these are the five they have given but they have lot many more models which we can fine tune it so here you can see the github repo as well if you want to explore more about it but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to uh, get this repo uh, this collab notebook 5 3.5 mini so basically it would look something like this so they have already written few lines of code and you need not to do anything much to fine tune your model except providing your model name or the data set which you are looking forward for so i have taken this one and changed a little bit very little changes i have done and this is my notebook so that's why you can see here i have copied this one and then another thing is about the data set so let me quickly point you to the data set so this is the data set which i have created some time back and if you have not seen how you can create your own data set then i would recommend you to watch my earlier video i will provide the link of this video in the description box as well so let's have a quick look at the data set first so this is my data set which I have created and here we have two things one is the instruction and then we have the output so these are the questions which I have picked from real life day-to-day uh, -day life and if you will read like this one why can't I find my keys so have you tried looking where you last had them or use a key finder next time so what it is trying to do is it will make your answers a little bit funny or it will answer you in a more sarcastic way but at the end of the day it will tell you the correct way to handle that particular problem so let's talk about this question so can you help me with my diet sure I will eat all your junk food for you but really uh, balanced diet and portion control are important so this is how it is so first it is giving something very funny some ridiculous answer but at the end it is guiding you what you need to do for your these questions or the problem so this is a data set I'm going to use here and uh, let me go ahead and make it public because I just made it private now moving on to our notebook so make sure that you are installing these two packages because that's where everything is deciding right now so and if you want to read more about it there are like a documentation and links provided at every single step so you can go ahead and explore this as well and here they are saying we support llama, mustrel, code llama, tiny llama and all these things so definitely you can fine tune and train these models using Unsloth AI now another important thing is here they are saying they are supporting 16-bit LoRa and 14-bit QLoRa so which is like very very fast to fine tune any LLM so let's give it few seconds and it should be done
So you can see the cell is executed successfully. Now I am going to trigger the next cell. So in this cell, what it is doing, it is utilizing first language model class from the unslot. It is importing torch and setting few parameters over here. And here you can see these are the four bit models available. And here they have given just to provide you an idea about what all they have. So uh, these are like not just a handful but if you want to go through the entire list you can go to this unslot link and here you can see these are the various collections in the model so here you can see it is supporting 223 models so it means that you can go ahead and use any of these models and here you can see it is having the most popular ones as well so i just picked one out of it so let me quickly five 3.5 and here you can see it is uh, defined over here so this is the one mini instruct which I'm going to pick today okay so let's go ahead and let's give it a few seconds looks like some packages are mismatching let me quickly fix this i'm installing the updated version of xformers so after that we'll try this again so the package is installed and now i'm rerunning this particular cell so once it is successful i will tell you what is going inside this So it is still going on. You can see the progress bar running at the bottom. So what we are doing here is, so these are the, like I was saying, these are the list of models. They have given it for sample, but there is a huge list which you can definitely have a look at this particular URL and you can pick any of those. So in our case, I just picked this one, 53 mini 4K instruct. And once this is okay, so the cell is done. Next is, uh, and Another thing which I would like to tell you is here we are adding LoRa adapter. So if you don't know LoRa, I can quickly brief you uh, about that. So LoRa is short for low rank adaptation and it is a technique which is used in machine learning to efficiently fine tune large language models. And the overall purpose or the motive behind uh, using this LoRa is to aim for reduced memory footprint and the reduced computation. So that will help our large model to fine tune at a very efficient pace and here you can see it is successful and what we are doing here is so now LoRa has lot many parameters and what it is saying is we need to update at least 10 percent of all the parameters so these are the key modules so these are the list of modules which LoRa would be applied and so now why these modules are taken I'm not very much sure because I'm still going through this machine learning stuff but these are the modules which is, it is trying to update the parameters for and then we have the LoRa alpha so this is the scaling factor for the LoRa layers then we have the dropout set to zero so this is the dropout rate for LoRa layers and zero means uh, no dropouts basically and so no bias and once these parameters are set next thing is the data preparation part so here comes the instruction. So here we are giving the prompt that follow this instruction and answer the question. So this is the prompt which I have given over here. Here it would be the like this is basically the template for our prompt. So what we are doing here is whatever the data we are having, we just need to just draft some kind of like format. So we have instruction like I have shown you here and we do have an output in our JSON file. So these are the two things we will be picking up and then we are forming a text field. So and for that here we are loading the data set. So this is the same data set which I have shown you over here. Let me quickly open that up. So this is the same data set which I am taking. And if you want to have a look at the data, I can quickly show you. So this is the instruction and the output. And that's what I'm taking it over here. So once we have the data set, we can go ahead and execute the cell as well. So well, it's done very quickly. Next comes the train model. So let me execute the cell and then I will talk a little bit about it. So for training the models, 
so it is using the SFT trainer. So this is the class from TRL library and majorly used for uh, supervised fine training basically. So we have our data. We are saying to the system that use this particular kind of thing and generate the response accordingly. So we are basically supervising the system or supervising fine tuning of our language model, which we have picked and in our case, it is 5.3 mini. And these are the various parameters. So before that, like I spoke about this, then comes the training argument. So it is a class from the transformer library that holds all the arguments which are required for training. Then we have is blot float, uh, is B float 16 supported. So this is a function again from the unslot and it checks if the current hardware supports the float 16 precision or not. Now coming on to the trainer, so these are the various parameters which needs to be, um, these are the parameters which we need to set. And here if you can see there is a, something called output directory. So output directory is where our model would be saved. Sorry. Output directory is where our model would be saved and then uh, max steps which we have defined. So these are the max steps which, are, which we are suggesting it to take. And here we have a packing equal to true, false. So if you want to uh, generate short sequences with faster speed, you have to set this packing parameter to true. Then we have the data set is nothing but the one which we are supplying from top, uh, the previous cell. Then we have the text field on which we are going to perform all these things. So this is done. Next thing is if you want to see how much memory footprint or how much consumption is there based on the which GPU. So here you can see Tesla 4 I'm using. And if you want to know how I'm selecting, you can see on the top right corner, I have selected the T4. If you want, you can select something else, but make sure that that is compatible and good enough for training this particular uh, model. So here it is saying this much memory reserved and max memory, uh, which can be utilized as 14 GB. And we are using Tesla T4 GPU. Now, once this is done, we have the trainer dot train. So I don't want to execute this cell as of now, because I want to show you how system is reacting prior to fine uh, prior, uh, prior to fine tuning so uh, let's say so if you want you can execute the cell i'm not going ahead with this that is just to show you the memory footprint and the final uh, stats for the timings so now i'm going to invoke the uh, model i want to make a call to the model and i will say okay take this prompt how do i fix my computer and just get me the response so what we are doing here is if I tell you briefly about this. So what we have here is the, here we are constructing a prompt and see that we are not giving anything in the output because this is what we want system to generate or the LLM to generate for us. Then we have a tokenizer. So tokenizer, this is the class which is used to convert input text into tensors. Uh, that model can process. So model processes tensors and this is the line which is going to, the tokenizer is the one which is going to take care of that. Then we have a prompt like I have already mentioned. So make sure to leave it empty because we don't want to provide output from our end. Then we have the return tensor. So what this line is doing, so we have set return tensors to PT which means that you use the PyTorch tensor format. So that's what PT is saying over here. And then we have to CUDA. So it is saying that moves the tensor to the GPU for faster processing. And that's what this CUDA is doing here. And then we are just seeing max token. And let's quickly execute this cell and see what is happening here. It's going to take a few seconds and we should have our response ready. Do keep in mind that till now I have not fine tuned my model. It is just how the raw model is behaving. We are just going to see the output for this particular question. And here you can see what it is saying is to fix your computer, you can follow these general steps. Identify the problem, determine what is not working correctly. Is it a hardware issue, a software issue or something else? And then second suggestion it is giving is rest restart your computer. Sometimes a simple as it restart can resolve the issue. So this is the standard way uh, for this model to respond. Now I'm going to fine tune it based on my particular data set. 
So for that, what we can do is I will quickly go ahead and run this particular cell. So this is the place where we are training our model and let's give it a few seconds. And it should be done. So I need to provide my key here. Uh, let me quickly grab it. So this is my key and until it process I can quickly touch base on this weights and biases. So this is the place or you can see the database where you can see uh, how much time it took for your monitoring, what are the output parameters uh, which were generated during this fine tuning model. So these are the parameter uh, things which you can monitor over here. And if you don't know like how to reach there and again there is a summary of how many epochs we have used or how many training steps per second were taken so all these were the information are these the information which you can have a look and this is the notebook link now going back one step further so these are the like i was saying these are the things which you can utilize to further understand your training process and accordingly, you can decide whether you need to take a huge data set or you need to change the CP, uh, that the GPU and all those decisions, you can make it. So moving back to it, it is still training and it will go until 60. So let's give it a few seconds. Anyways, it's doing pretty fast. So and I think I will show you what is the output, but if you are interested in knowing how to save the strain model or how to load this, then the guide is further telling you that information that how you can save and load your fine tune model. So if you are interested, you can go through it. I'm not going to cover this part because my main motive was to show you how you can fine tune, how you can like experiment with your model or the data and how it is working. So if it is working, you can go ahead and try it out in your own notebook using your own GPU. But it is always good to try out somewhere where we are not like having so much costly options. So, okay, so let's see if it is trained. Okay, so it's trained. You can see that the 16 or the chunks, 60. And now if I'm going to run the same thing for the same computer, uh, same question. So how do I fix my computer? And here you can see the response, just hit it with a hammer, but seriously try restarting it first. So you can see how sarcastic this answer is. So first it is talking something really very funny and then it is telling you the actual solution. And that's what our data set was all about. So I hope you got an idea how to experiment with your data set or how you can understand the let, little bit about the fine tuning process. So even if you are not into deep into the ML, still you can go ahead and fine tune using this particular sample or the notebooks which are provided over here. So I tried 5.3.5, but definitely you can go ahead and try these out. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video and do let me know in comments if you have any such options where you can uh, train your models without having much costly options. Thanks for watching.